Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Barry Erickson. I'm Community Engagement Coordinator here at Wheaton Public Library. Tonight, we are delighted to bring you another of the art demonstrations provided in partnership with the DuPage Art League. Funded over 60 years ago, the DuPage Art League is dedicated to promoting and encouraging the visual arts through classes, workshops, gallery exhibits, and public programs such as this one. We are grateful to the DuPage Art League for arranging tonight's demonstration by acclaimed artist, Karen Smith. So at this point, I'm gonna introduce Sandy. Thank you, Barry. I am Sandy Winter. I am Vice President of Activities at the DuPage Art League. The DuPage Art League is pleased to be partnering with the Wheaton Public Library to bring you this hybrid presentation. And if you are viewing this presentation virtually, we would love to know where you are at right now. So tell us in the comments or in the chat. This month's artist is Karen Smith, and she will be demonstrating pottery techniques to create functional art. And full disclosure, she is my sister. I am not being bribed in any way to say these nice things about her. And it's only been recent that Karen has become interested in channeling her artistic energies. Her formal training began at Penguin Foot Pottery in Chicago, Illinois, and continues at Harold Washington College in Chicago. Karen's work has impressed her instructors who have recognized how quickly she's grasped the stuck slip, uh, easy for me to say, the sculpting uh, techniques that can take some artists years to understand. Please. Welcome, Karen Smith. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, as, as my wonderful sister said, um, I've only been doing this for about a year and a half. So during COVID, like many people, I bought a lot of plants and binged Netflix a whole lot. <laughs> And I came upon, upon a show called The Great Pottery Throwdown, which is a contest-based show. Um, and every week, one of the artists is eliminated and culminating at the, you know, the, the final uh, greatest potter ever for five minutes. Um, and so I, I really got interested and I thought, oh, this is, I think I'd like to do this. And so, uh, as she said, I went to my very first class and you think you could do things. <laughs> and then you figure out, no, not so much. So, you know, I, I was so extremely very proud <laughs> of my very first, and this is called a pinch pot, um, which is basically just like it sounds. You take a ball of clay and you start pinching it and you pinch it and you pinch it and you squeeze it and you compress it and you pinch it and you pinch it. And then you get fancy and make these little things on the side. And it was in my brain was going to be a little planter for like little succulents or something. Um, but in my inexperience, my hole for my drainage was way too small. Didn't understand shrinkage rates. It. And when I glazed it, I glazed right over it. So it now sits on my desk and holds paper clips. Um, so uh, Barry, would you just put on, uh, so I just want to go through very quickly some of the things that I uh, have made. Um, and again, this is just a, many things are sitting on the table back here, many things I have um, uh, been able to sell. And so you might not, you know, uh, see them on the table. Um, this was my very first fairy house that I made. And um, it's very kind of simplistic, but it actually was very difficult for me to make. I actually threw this one on the wheel. And so, you know, it, I formed it on the wheel and then decorated it after that. And then the rest of these, uh, at your leisure, whatever. Yeah. So just, you know, I started just getting creative. I just had a, I would get a picture in my brain and um, I started making these things. Uh, and these are all very small. I got into a berry phase. <laughs> I'm still kind of in it. So a couple of strawberries, I have a uh, blueberry, um, uh, pumpkins, which are not necessarily berries, but in the in the vegetable, fruit and vegetable family, that type of thing. Um, 
And you know, it, it really depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, small, big, uh, how much clay I have in front of me. All of these, um, I, I'm sorry, 95% of them are illuminaries. So they all have a hole in the bottom that you could put a candle, uh, you know, uh, battery operated candle. These two acorns, the lids come off. These are very tiny. Oh, I'm sorry, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you could just keep going. <laughs> um, uh, so you can, uh, the light shines, you know, through them. It's very difficult to see when the lights are on, you know, obviously, but they look quite cute and make patterns on the walls when, you know, when the, it's in the dark. Um, so again, very tiny ones. Uh, I uh, then got into a mushroom slash fairy phase <laughs> and I just started making all kinds of mushrooms. Um, these are tiny little little guys, little uh, houses. Yeah, um, again, I just, you know, it depends on what my mood is. Just, I try to envision. So real quick, I'm sorry, this one, I, I put this one here because the different stages of uh, clay decorating, um, and I'll explain a little bit further, but this is before it is fired for the first time on this one on the left. And so I like to paint with what are called underglazes, which you could use much more like just regular paint. And the reason I like to do that is because once it comes out of the bisque, and I'll explain that also in a minute, um, the, the, I can kind of look at, did I miss any place? You know, I could touch it up, that type of thing before the final firing. Um, and so the one on the right, obviously, is the final, uh, the final, little project. Um, and so we have a few more, I think, yeah, just, you know, different things. I And one of the things also that I really uh, try to keep track of is that I, I want something on all sides. I don't want to just be a face forward kind of thing. Um, I want you to be able to put it on a table, <laughs> walk around it and see. Um, it's funny, one of the comments that I get the most is, um, some variation of, oh, I wish I could live in there, or could you make me one big enough that I could live in, <laughs> which would take a kiln the size of this room. Um, so that's kind of a no, I would say. Uh, again, just, you know, um, I get myself into trouble sometimes because I make things so small that it's so difficult to paint or get into, you know, places that are, uh, that are the paintbrush, you know, wants to touch all sides and not just where I want the paint to go. Um, I also used uh, uh, like decals a little bit. You'll see the, the green uh, on this one, the green uh, flowering uh, is a, like a, like a uh, not a stencil, but a, um, like a tattoo kind of thing that you can put onto uh, this square in it. It's basically paint. This one, um, so this one was, uh, as uh, my sister mentioned also, uh, I'm a professor at Harold Washington College, not in ceramics, I teach linguistics and um, grammar and writing to uh, ESL students. Um, and one of the perks is that I get a free class. And so um, it just so happens that the professor is a friend of mine. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, I you know, was able to, I, I take a class there. And this was one of the projects that we had to do in, in uh, uh, the class, you know, and stuff. And so this one, this, uh, as I was making it, one of my classmates um, asked me to buy it. <laughs> as soon as it gets out of can, can I have that? Uh, yes, so it's not here. I'm <laughs> sorry, she, she bought it for her daughter, her granddaughter and stuff. So um, again, as I said, I got into mushrooms and, it, now, now I just see mushrooms everywhere and I, like different colors and I have to, you know, uh, and then I have to add, you know, caterpillars and snails and, and butterflies and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so this was, this is, um, this happens to be at a show that I, that I did and, you know, some of the, the ones that uh, uh, I reproduced and stuff. So, so 
this is, these are some of the items that I made. Um, I, I get into moods where all I want to do is fairy stuff. And then I kind of see other things that I think are interesting. And then I veer off for, for a little while and, and, you know, make things that are more functional. Uh, I've, I've never been like a, just make a mug kind of person. I, I can't do that. I have to, it's gotta be, it's gotta have stuff coming off of it in some ways. Um, and so when uh, there's different kinds of clay, first of all, um, there's earthenware, which as it sounds, it kind of has a lot more, you know, the clay is made from, from earth. There's uh, stoneware, and this is what I'll be working on with today is, is pretty much stoneware. And when it's fired, it is like stone. I mean, it will, you know, if you slam it on the floor, it's going to break, but it's, it's a good weight and it's, you know, good structure. Um, and then there's porcelain which is that beautiful, you know, you see, you know, things you could, light goes through it. And one of the very, uh, this is the farthest end from technical <laughs> kind of speeches, it's got silica in it and the, the silica turn, it melts in the kiln and kind of turns to glass. And the same thing, it, it binds the, the molecules of the clay and the same thing with the, the glaze that has silica in it also. And so that gives it that glassy um, uh, look. Um, the, there's other kinds of clay and such as air dry clay, which is again, as it sounds, you work with it, you a lot of water on your hands, you make shapes, you air dry it and then you paint it. You know, I think some of us might've worked with it when we were younger, you know, in like school, that kind of thing. There's also polymer clay, which is a little step up. You have to bake that. Um, uh, and that I would not suggest for, like one of the main reasons I wouldn't use it is because it really takes a lot to manipulate it. And if you have any kind of problems with your hands or strength, it's, it can, it's a little bit more involved to, to work with. Um, the ways that you can manipulate, manipulate clay are also different. So there are, as I mentioned, you know, just pinching a pot. And that is just, you just get a ball of clay, put your thumb in it to make a thing and you start going around and just pinching it. And you thin the sides up and you can make, you know, basically a, a bowl, tiny bowl, a little tiny espresso cup, you know, that type of thing. Um, another way is throwing on the wheel. And so because that would be way too messy to do here, I have a video of the couple different steps. So Barry, would you mind um, doing the first video? And so um, this is the, a standard wheel that, uh, uh, I, that we have at school. And what I'm doing right now, this is called centering. So I have a, a, a chunk of clay, and I plop it down, I try to get it as centered as I can on the, on the wheel. And then it's a process of squeezing the clay from the bottom. And when you squeeze it, it has to go someplace. And so it goes up. Then I push it back down and I do that a couple of times. And that literally um, centers that clay on that wheel. And so the centrifugal force, you know, it's not going wobbly and I can I kind of force it with my hands. Um, here, I'm opening it up, it's called. So I push my fingers down to about three eighths of an inch, you know, that type of thing. Um, I, you'll see me put my thumb in there. I'm compressing the bottom. I'm, I'm making the bottom, all those molecules stick together. Um, and then I, I'm opening it up. Right here, it's called pulling the sides. And I have to slow my wheel down a little bit. And I am, again, I have, fingers on the inside and the outside. And I'm pushing my fingers together and go doing an upward motion. And again, the clay has to you know, go somewhere. And so if you do it, if you're a patient and you do it correctly, then you get, you know, it turns more into a cylinder. Um, this, is, this stage is also where you kind of decide what your intention is, what you're making, how big it is. Um, right here, I decided I'm going to be making a bowl. This is about five, five pounds of clay that I'm working with right here. Um, and you'll see that I'm, I'm going in the water constantly. I'm, I'm uh, squeezing water on there. I'm taking water out, squeezing more on there. And it, that's so that to prevent friction 
uh, you know, you want the clay to be super slippery so your hands could move on it up and down. Um, and you also see that um, I will be using, uh, like I have that wooden rib there. I also have a metal rib. One big thing in clay is compression. When, you, when you're moving clay, when you're stretching it, you know, you're, you're trying to center it, you're trying to wedge it, anything, you're kind of breaking those, those bonds a little bit. You want to compress clay so that it becomes, you know, it's like friends with it. <laughs> the molecules are friends. So here um, I'm preparing to kind of make it, I decided that I wanted to make a bowl. And so I'm uh, uh, wet hands, that's what happens with wet hands. You can't pick up your tools. Um, so here I'm, I'm doing the compressing. I'm trying to now get some water off of the, the sides. Um, I am uh, uh, smoothing it out. I'm uh, doing that from both inside and outside. Uh, and I, a lot of stuff is by feel. You know, if sometimes you'll see me, I'm, I'll, I'll feel the side. Sometimes I'll feel a little piece of grit or something in there that I want to smooth out. Um, and I don't usually pause that still. <laughs> what is the thing in your right hand? The thing in the, my right, so. The, we have to remember about the microphone. Um, that's okay. The, so she asked me what the thing in my right hand, it's called a rib, a metal rib. And this is uh, this metal rib. It's, you know, it's uh, flexible, it's flexible. And uh, you use this to basically it's scraping, you know, I'm scraping the sides. Um, I'm, uh, it works really well to get the moisture off. It will uh, almost, Sometimes, you know, when it gets a little bit drier, like it's almost burnishing the, the sides so that it's a, a much smoother kind of kind of texture. Um, very, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm sorry. So just hold on just a second, Barry. So it, what it, the, the video froze. That's why I was just saying. So it, there wasn't really much more of that. It was just a little bit more of me shaping it, pushing it out to, to be a bowl. All right, and so after that, after that happens, I will uh, take it off the wheel and usually put it on some kind of uh, wooden board uh, because it needs to dry a little bit. At, at that stage that you saw it while it was on the wheel, it, it's, it's still kind of like a piece of paper. You know, you could, you could blow on it and it'll go out of shape. And so what you usually do then is you take it off and let it sit uh, under plastic, you know, for maybe a day. Um, we also have what are called dry boxes, which are little, you know, like boxes with fans in them that if you want to hurry it up a little bit, you can do that um, until it gets to what is called leather hard. Um, leather hard is, it's still, you can still move it, but it, it held its shape a little bit better. No. Yes, my question is, how do you get now what we saw? Yeah. Okay. So how do you get that little sucker to come up off there without falling in on itself? The bowl, oh, when you when you, when I'm when I'm done with the bowl. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's it and that is one of the most treacherous parts. Seriously, <laughs> ask it. I have I have made so many bowls that started looking like bowls and ended up like squares because I meant to do it like that. Um, there is a tool this <laughs> this tool and so um basically i'm going to be putting water down on the wheel around the bowl and then i very tautly hold this to the wheel and basically i just pull towards myself and um so uh this is a, a cutting tool so it, it's basically what's that a tarot <laughs> where you Grab, there you go. You know, it, it's a piece of wire with, with um, uh, wood uh, handles on the end. Uh, and it makes it very easy to slice through and get that, you know, the, because the clay is kind of suctioned down to the wheel. And so you're just, you're cutting through. And because there's water on the wheel, it helps that bowl to kind of start to hydroplane a little bit. And then you very carefully... <laughs> as you pray to the, the, <laughs> the clay gods, and then you put it down onto, onto you know, some kind of uh, wooden thing because wood will absorb uh, moisture, 
All right. And so, as I said, you get you try to get to a leather hard stage. And I'm going to show you a little bit later on in my presentation uh, what that kind of looks like. But so right now I have this the same bowl. This is um, either later or a couple of days later. Um, and what I do is uh, I I'm going to be trimming away excess. I you make it kind of you know thicker to be able to hold a shape and stuff. And then you want to take away and, and make it thinner. Uh, again, this is all about this is compressing the clay also a little bit. Um, I have a tool which is this is just a trimming tool um, that I am going up and down, up and down. I can shape it a little bit better um, if you know if I wanted to. Uh, when after I get it to the shape that I like, I could actually do different techniques where I, you know, it's called chattering, where I kind of go up and down and it makes, you know, makes patterns in the, in the clay. Um, but basically, I am just taking off as much clay as I think should be taken off. I, you don't want your bowl or cup or whatever to weigh 10 pounds. <laughs> you want it to be a nice weight. Um, and so you take off a good fair amount. I tend to make my bottoms thick so that I could uh, dig into the top and it still has a, a bottom that will sit on the table. Um, uh, and so again, this is just basically me trimming. Uh, again, I'm, uh, where my fingers are on the top, I've already kind of sliced out a little bit of that. This is also the stage where I put my maker's mark. And so my maker's mark is my little, my little design. Um, and so it's a little stamp that I, that I uh, put on. And then I put this on the, the shelf to kind of uh, dry a little bit slowly in preparation for going to the uh, bisque fire. Now, if this is one of my fairy houses, I would have painted it at this stage. I, I paint it and um, underglaze paints will uh, absorb into leather hard clay much better than at any other stage, I believe. And so that's when I usually will, will paint, you know, this kind of thing. Um, uh, and then it goes to be bisqued. And so that's the first firing. It's 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 not as high as the the last fire, and it's about, if I'm correct, somewhere around twelve hundred to fifteen hundred degrees, that type of thing. And then it comes out, and it looks like this. So this is you know, for all intents and purposes, this is uh you know you could use this. Um, uh, feeling it's kind of heavy. <laughs> like oh this one's this one's a little heavier um i i must have done something because i turned it into a planter <laughs> i i just oh uh, no this is going to be a planter so it was either too small or too big for whatever i intended and um and the bottom is where i put my my maker's mark uh that is unique to me i you know that type of thing so all right uh the next one barry so uh yeah, if, if you, could, you could go to the next one if you want, um, because this is just trimming. This is just trimming, 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 trimming. The yes. So the so the she asked was the bowl upside down. Yes, the bowl the bowl is like this, and you will see in the video there's little chunks of clay that are anchoring it down to the wheel so that it doesn't start uh, spinning off its axis, you know, and so that keeps it down. And I am, uh, uh, you know, trimming down here because I can, at, you know, I can turn it over and just kind of fix this with my fingers if I needed to. All right. And so then the next stage, um, it's been bisqued and um, I'm going to glaze it. So very, very importantly, you see what I'm doing right now is I'm putting wax, it's called wax resist, around the, the bottom where it is going to be sitting on first the kiln shelf, but then, you know, in the future, sitting on a table or whatever. Um, and the reason why we do this, and it's so important, is because for, for instance, for bowls, cups, that type of thing, I'm going to be dunking it into a bucket of glaze. If I, wherever I put the wax resist, the glaze will not stick. 
which is nice. <laughs> you do have to wipe it off, uh, you know, after you after you dunk it in the glaze. Otherwise, it will fuse to the kiln shelf, and kiln shelves are very expensive, and they have to chisel your 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 piece off, and so you you wreck a kiln shelf, and there's a good chance that your beautiful uh, ceramic piece is going to be chiseled also. Um, and so then finally, the last the last video is just very quickly just showing you. Um, uh, I've I've done the bottom. I'm going to be doing the inside with white glaze. Um, and again, you know, you just put it in. I decided I wanted to make this two-toned. Uh, so I started with the, the inside um, and then uh, and spill it out, uh, let it dry a little bit more. I decided to do two coats of the white for this. And then I dipped it into red, and this is the this is the bowl that you see from the from the video. <laughs> okay, and um, so again, you'll see down here on the bottom. Uh, this is where I put all the the wax resist, um, and then tried to you know wipe the rest off so that it does not stick to the to the kiln. It didn't. <laughs> Very happy because the the kiln gods. They are vicious. So, but that uh, wax just melt in the in the kiln. Yeah, the way it just because, but it in, still doesn't stick. Um, it still doesn't stick. Correct, because what is happening in when it's when it's the the second firing, that temperature is much higher, um, like 25, 2700 degrees, and it does it it does melt in in the kiln. But the the glaze is kind of doing a process of it's melting a little bit and reforming. Some glazes will run, they say, um, but in most cases, you know, you kind of get to to know which ones run and which ones don't. I knew that this one didn't run, and so wherever the the wax resist was, I was going to be safe that. The, it was not going to fuse to the uh, bottom of the kiln. Uh, the, it wasn't going to run. It wasn't going to go any place other than where I had put it on the on the bisque. What if um, it does run? Uh, that if it does run, and it believe, I, luckily because I was had very good teacher at the beginning who just emphasized, you know, do not put it past this point. Um, if it does, what will happen is actually it kind of pulls like a, a drip of paint. And it does, like I said, as I said, it fuses the glaze, then fuses to the kiln shelf. And uh, so there's, we have, a, it's all over our studio, um, wipe your bottoms. <laughs> wipe your bottoms because uh, kilns, kilns are expensive. Uh, okay. Yes, so, so uh, hold on, I, microphone real quick. <laughs> so unless you're really a person who wants to have this in their home, you really have to have it in a studio or something like that. Correct, and I, that, that's a really good question. Yes, um, I do know people who have kind of set it up at home. The problem is you have to think of um, uh, other things beyond it just messy clay kind of thing. Uh, clay is really bad for your, your sewer system. <laughs> And so you cannot just, oh, I think I'll just wash my clay stuff in the sink because it really can, can ruin your pipes. Um, studios have special filterings, filtering mechanisms on their sinks that, that grab all of the, the, the clay. Um, sometimes I, I just wash this because I wanted to look, you know, presentable. Um, but normally, you know, a lot of times I will, before I wash this, I hang it on the fence outside and spray it so that most of the clay gets off because I'm just kind of worried. I don't want it to go through my, you know, uh, my uh, uh, washing machine. However, there are ways to do it, you know, and as I said, I do know people who um, have set up, you know, smaller kilns. You don't have to have an industrial sized one. Smaller kilns, they do throw, they have throwing wheels in their in their apartments, in their homes, that type of thing. You do have to think about electricity uh, and the output of how much a, a kiln uh, puts out, you know, that type of thing. And so there are things that that you have to think about, which I'm making a list so that hopefully my husband one day would let me do it in the garage. 
<laughs> with a heater, <laughs> maybe a Christmas present, <laughs> free Christmas presents. Um, and so, yeah, so um, throwing, as I said, is, is one of the, the main uh, ways of manipulating clay. And I, I love throwing. I, I love, you know, making small things, big things, all kinds of, all kinds of shapes. Um, coming over here, I wanted to, uh, I mentioned to you that the, you know, the pinch pot, again, just a ball that you uh, uh, make into, seriously, you can't make it into much more than a like, a, like an espresso cup. There's also something called coiling. So coiling is where you, um, you take your clay and you roll it out into little coils, like little snakes. And for this, you, again, kind of, you know, decide what you, what you are going to be making. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple things here for you. One of the important things to always remember about with clay is when clay meets clay, they're friends, but just kind of like passing in the night friends. You really have to do, um, uh, you have to manipulate clay and make it wet so that it kind of forms into it melts into each other it's called slip and score and so i don't know why because you score first and then you slip but it slip and score is what i so you want you have two ends that you want to put together and so what you're going to do is you're going to basically you're roughing up the edge you're roughing up both edges where they're going to meet and some people just uh when they uh are going to be slipping and scoring. They just use water, which is works for many people. I um, uh, I'm not always that. I don't trust it that much because I want my stuff to really, really stick. And so you moisture will make you know water is polarized, so it's going to suck. To, water is going to suck to water, and you basically just you know incorporate it into. So you just incorporated it into itself. All right, so I just made this a basic little ring there. And so now I'm planning on doing more. I'm gonna be putting more on. So I'm scoring this, I'm making this a, a rough edge. I have another piece. Again, I'm going to score this. And it's, you don't, it doesn't need to be pretty at this stage because you're going to make it pretty. You want it to, to stick to each other. You want it to really kind of bound together. So. I'm gonna just put it together. And I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna slip and score a little bit more so they really get to like each other. And at this stage, the clay, the clay is still very soft and manipulable. Um, but you don't wanna you don't wanna just uh, uh, have it, you know, like uh, take think that that's gonna be enough. So I have I have another tool. So this is it's a it's a looks like a rib, and it it has um, it's very similar to the other rib that I I was showing you. But this one has a serrated edge, which I always like to use because it's a bigger. Uh, this this tool is my favorite little tool in the whole world, and it looks like a little metal brushed sort of you know that that makes it's very stiff and it makes nice impressions this one is uh like a serrated edge and so what i'm going to do is i'm roughing up i'm roughing up the the edges and basically it helps me so that i could incorporate the clay better all right and i would do this from the outside the inside just continue up. I would just higher and higher and higher. And there's some people who just they kind of like the look of the the uh, rings, you know, that type of thing. You could leave it like that. That's no problem. You could smooth it just on the inside. Leave the outside plain. Whatever you want to do. So um, coiling again. Coiling is one of the kind of first things that you learn how to do after you make your atrocious pinch pot. <laughs> Um, and uh, it's I've made I made a uh, uh, one of my projects that I had to do uh, for my class was make something 
through coils that was 15 inches tall and at least the diameter had to be five inches wide. <laughs> and so it was a process of um, building that up. And the, the thing that you have to think about with clay is clay is heavy. And so you have to, you have to always think about what is, you know, how much weight is on, you know, going to be supported by that, that bottom. And so one of the ways to uh, kind of fix that a little bit is um, to uh, do a section, kind of let it get a little bit leather hardish. So it's, it's got more strength to hold, you know, whatever uh, weight you put on it. Again, compressing, compressing, compressing. You just, you know, you just want to keep continue to do that. Um, and so, uh, while those are all great, I also like this uh, way that I'm going to be showing you right now. This is called slab building, and it's kind of, you know, self-explanatory. You make a slab, <laughs> make a slab of clay. And so, just to just to kind of save time, what I did was. Um, got here a little bit early and uh, we, uh, you could either roll it out. And so we have these, uh, we call them slats and they come in different thicknesses. Um, this thickness, I, I would say is kind of three eighths, maybe a little bit less than three eighths of an inch. Um, you don't want it to be that thin. And you'll notice if when you look at some of my fairy houses, especially the bases tend to be very thin. And I was really kind of pushing my luck with that um, because they could crack very easily. Uh, it, you know, they say clay has a memory. And this is true if you over manipulate it or if you have something, let it, like for instance, let it dry. If I had this hanging over the edge a little bit, when it fires, it will want to, I don't know how, but it'll kind of want to kind of go back into that shape. And so if you want a straight wall, uh, you have to be really, really diligent in kind of keeping it flat and keeping it at a, at a good uh, angle, you know, while you're working with it. So basically what I did for this is I had these slabs and I used my rolling pin to roll out um, a bit of clay uh, that I have for you here. And then very importantly, when I uh, um, am going to uh, work with it, after I roll it out, see if I can uh, do my little trick here. Thank you. So this has basically just been, it's just been rolled. Uh, I, I tried to get it to be in an even thickness. And one of the important first steps is to compress the clay again. So I've rolled it out, it looks like it's nice, but I just want to go over it with some kind of, I like using metal ribs. Um, metal ribs are very versatile <laughs> and you just go in one direction and you're pushing the, the clay down getting it to be uh, you know one happy piece i had done it on the previous side uh before i before i wrapped it um and you'll notice that i that i had it under uh, saran wrap. I had it under some kind of plastic because clay, especially when it's on wood, will dry very quickly. And it'll dry sometimes faster than you want it to because you want to be able to manipulate it, move it around. Um, you don't want it to get so dry that it cracks because it will. You know. And so one of the other trusty, trusty things is a spray bottle of water to, you know, no, I'm the boss. You're not the boss. You're going to stay moist. So I have this um, uh, uh, slab. I've compressed it. And so um, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to make one of these planters. And so um, the, uh, 
the one that the one this is going to be about the size of the one that we're going to make today if you would be interested in doing something like this with air dry clay i do believe that this would this would work fine i would just suggest that that you make sure that you paint it uh, with some kind or spray it some kind of glaze so that it um, is sealed uh, before you start putting water in it in the, after you uh, it's I, I I made these because I thought I saw this and unfortunately I I saw this um, uh, wonderful potter uh, do something similar to this online and unfortunately I cannot find the the video to give her credit because this was this was her design um but i thought oh i would just love to to make something like that again i am a plant lady also so i need planters all the time um but the small one i think is very very doable for for uh anybody who you know is even just starting out so i have my slab I have compressed it. And now I'm going to cut out my forms. This, uh, these two forms, this is just fun foam. And what I did was I just found like something round. I think, I think it was like a bowl or something that I, yeah, that's about the size I want. And I just traced around it, cut it out. This happens to be about eight inches um, in diameter. <laughs> I was diameter circumference. Okay. Um, and then the, the smaller holes, about four and a half, that type of thing. All right. So, uh, and again, fun foam is great to, to make little uh, 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 things that you, if you're going to make it, be making uh, a project over and over, you know, you can tell <laughs> this is not pristine. I've, I've used these. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find two areas on here where I can cut out these two shapes. Okay, so I think I'm going to, I think I'm gonna do right here. This will be the first one. And I'm going to, this is, this is called a pin tool. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but again, very, very versatile tool. This I use for seriously so many things it, and I, I bought like four of them because I put it down on the table and these things just roll away. <laughs> and so I always need to, to find my other. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just with my pin tool, I'm going to kind of cut around it. And it's at this stage, you're not, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not exact or if you're going to be pushing the clay around anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Let me make another one here because we need a front and a back. Okay, so here we go. All right. Now I take my smaller one, and the the only important part about this is to kind of get visuals. You want to put the smaller circle in relatively the same place on both of them so that it you have that kind of pretty see-through you know look so and again i'm just kind of i'm just eyeballing it uh i i learned a long time ago there's like trying to do something perfect in ceramics is that no uh -uh. it's kind of like life right <laughs> you try to do it nah, doesn't work all right so this one i'm going to cut around also and the ingenious ingenious part of this pattern is that um, I'm going to, so again, I'm, I'm trying to look at the first one, make sure that it's roughly about the same, the same. Um, the ingenious part about this is that these smaller circles, um, I'm going to be using uh, as the base of the planter. Okay, so, so at this stage, I have, um, I have my shapes and I decided that, cause I'm kind of mimicking these a little bit. This is a silicone, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, like a, a texture 
I guess, silicone texture that I just bought offline. You know, I, I buy a lot of stuff online, just at various places. I, I see things and I go, I could use that to make an impression. And it's not always the thing that it was intended to, to be. So this, very important that your clay is still, so let me show you just real quickly. So my clay is still, very malleable, right? It's it's still I'm I can sweat, I can do whatever I want with it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a texture in here. And again, doesn't it doesn't really matter. Uh, you kind of put in it all over the place. I should I don't want to take it too much out, but I want to make sure that I'm not fusing these back together. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that there for a minute. I'm going to do the same thing here. All right, and so I have my, I have my clay pieces. And at this point, this is where I would want it to just kind of sit, relax a little bit, because you, you see, you know, this is, this is not going to stand up. This is not going to necessarily, you know, stand up by itself. It will, stand, you know, and when you want it to stand up and it doesn't, it's a little bit frustrating. So this is the, the, the beginning part. Um, and as I said, I'm going to just kind of I would normally just put it to the side a little bit, let it get a little bit leather hard. And while I work on the next part here, and so this is the, the portion that uh, connects, connects, the, connects the two pieces. All right, so what I did was I measured the circumference of this, of this circle, which happens to be about 24 inches. So I always, you know, 24 and a half, 25 inches, because you're gonna be cutting away. So this is about 24, 20, 25 inches. Um, and what I did was, so I rolled it out the same thickness as, as the rest of the pieces. Uh, again, just to save time, I already kind of uh, cut a straight edge. And then with a ruler, I just measured two inches all along, all right? I marked what is about uh, 12 inches, the middle, and then one inch on each side. And so this is the, the two inches wide. So what I'm going to do is take one of my straight edges and again, you know, it. Don't worry if these lines do not absolutely line up. It is not important at this point. And so just going to the line, continue it. All right. So, so now I have my two inch strip, and you'll see that on the examples that the the bottom is wider than the top. And so I'm gonna make some gonna make some adjustments to it. So I just want to kind of double check my double check my measurements. And so this is about 12 inches. This is about 12 inches here. All right. So this is this is where I'm going to take this off. And then uh, at the ends, so this is this needs to come off. At the ends, again, I'm just going to kind of eyeball what the what the center is, and then kind of cut it into thirds. I'm sorry, into four pieces. All right. So the center, and then I'm going to make two other two other marks here. So I have this line here, this is kind of my, 
what I'm saying is center. And so what I'm going to do is with any kind of straight edge, I'm going to go up to the mark that's on the, which would be your left, I guess. And I'm going to angle it up to the center point here. And then cut that away. Same thing here. I'm going to find that center point. I should probably do it this way. Center point. And I'm going to cut it away. Same over here. And, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, I've only been doing this for about a year and a half. So I 100% consider myself still very much a novice. And I, I think that I found, you know, especially like my fairy houses, I, I kind of found my niche. And uh, I, I found the thing that I could do well. As I said, a lot of times my bowls turn into squares because <laughs> circles are hard sometimes. Um, so with, with this, what I'm going to do is I have, I have my center mark and then I've made kind of a, an inch on either side. And what I want to do is just maybe take a little bit of that off on both sides. So it's not, I don't want it to be that, that really pointed. Okay. So at this point, I do the same thing. Now, again, this, with this, uh, uh, impression, silicone impression, you want to think which way it's going to go. And so with my circles, I have it up and down this way. It kind of reminds me of bark. And so that's what I was kind of trying to uh, emulate. And so this is going to come up around the planter like this. So I want to put the impressions to be going up and down like this also. Okay, and so then same same kind of thing. I would let it go sit and kind of relax and get a little bit, you know, uh, to the point where it's agreeable to work with. And then, so because I would normally let this sit for a while, I prepared. I prepared ones that are hopefully a little bit more closer to, uh, to leather hard. All right, and so it, it kind of, it really comes to feel a little bit. I, I wish I could have you all feel this, but it's, it's much less, it does much less uh, uh, folding over on itself, it, it, it kind of holds its shape, you know, that type of thing. All right, so I have my pieces. And now this is, this is when I'm going to uh, begin assembly. All right, so uh, I'm going to sit down for this one. So another real important thing is to remember what's the top and what's the bottom. I mean, and I mean, like, this is the top, because I know that, thank goodness, because I made an impression in it, this would be the bottom, All right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach, I'm going to start attaching stuff to each other. All right, so excuse me, just one sec, I want to get my... Um, Hmm. All right, I don't need it. We'll just be working with water. So um, this is the piece. So this is the piece that I'm going to be uh, attaching of the sides, all right? Slip and score. So everybody is, is happy being together. Um, okay. I know I had a scoring thing right here. 
Here we go. All right. So I'm going to kind of rough up the clay. I'm, I'm trying to, the, the clay is still fairly moist, um, but a lot of times when it gets a little bit more in the leather hard stage, it, you really do have to kind of scratch into it because you want to get down to moister, moister clay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to score this and then I'm going to score the side of this. And I can tell, so this tip here was out of in the air. And so this, if I could just, I could crack this right now, where you can see the rest of it is, right? Yeah. Right, so, but you're not the boss of me tonight, Clay. So we'll, or it might be, I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm scoring it. And again, I have my, you know, about, you know, middle, middle point that I'm gonna be looking at. So uh, let's see. I'm going to be putting water on this. And um, many times, uh, as I think I mentioned it a little bit before, um, I like to use what's called slip. And what slip is, um, is clay that has been, I like it to get super, super dry where it becomes like I could make it like powder and then add it to water. And it's kind of like liquid clay sort of. Um, it works really, really well with binding uh, two things, you know, two pieces of clay together. And so. Just get in the water in there. And, you know, th that's another thing that you kind of have to think about is the amount of water. Um, water is your friend in some cases, but you don't want to use too much because then it can make the, the clay weak in that in that area. All right, so I have I have this in front of me, and this is this is about six o'clock. I want to put what I believe to be the center down at six o'clock, and I'm going to put it around. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of you can see I'm trying to like wiggle it, and I'm kind of pushing it, kind of like you know, so that it incorporates. Uh, that's not going to be the only thing. I'm going to be doing more, but <laughs> right now it's just become friends. This is your, this is who you're going to be with for a while. So, and you see that now I have this, this overlap here, which is fine. That's, that's what you want because you want, it's better to have more than less, right? And so, um, I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to cut through it. Ooh, that piece is kind of dry. So, so do you see how it just, it doesn't even bend. It just, it just breaks. And so that's a little bit past leather hard. That we, a little bit dangerous. So, all right. So because I'm, I'm joining two pieces together, I'm scoring and slipping. <coughs> And then I'm putting them together. So now, I wonder if I could see. So you'll see that there's a seam, right? There's a seam that is around. Well, I have to kind of deal with that. Right now, if I can see that it looks like a seam, that means that there's parts that are not necessarily going to be uh, friendly as I'd like it to be. So even after I'm pushing down and I'm kind of, you know, squeeching it around, I'm going to take um, a piece of, of clay and I'm going to, I feel so bad about the table. <laughs> um, I'm going to make it into a coil and basically just put that coil in the seam so it, it incorporates uh, the two pieces together. Um, uh, you know, sometimes I slip and score it. Uh, it, it, it sometimes it depends. Sometimes there's already marks there from 
uh, from me slipping and scoring it, you know, previously, never hurts. And so water, my brush. And so I'm putting water in here around there. And then just really quickly, just kind of get, you know, roughing the surface up a little bit so that there's the water goes into it. And I'm putting it right there in that seam. And then this is from, I, I, this is, I don't know why, this is one of my enjoyable, one of the weird enjoyable parts for me. It's because it's, I, I'm, it, I, it makes me feel confident that, um, it makes me feel confident that it's, I'm not going to have a crack or it's, not, it's going to stay, it, that it won't separate exactly, right. And so I'm, I'm just kind of, as I said, just pushing it in. And then I will use some other kind of tool. Actually, I want to use this one. Some other kind of tool that I'm really, really making it, you know, my my idea is that I'm going to make it look like there was, it was not ever two pieces, that it was absolutely in you know, a one piece from the start. All right, so Bandy, let's see if I can move it a little bit. No, not gonna work. All right, so incorporating it, incorporating it. And normally, to tell you the truth, I would spend a lot more time on this, um, watching me just fiddle with this clay, I know is not going to be that entertaining. Um, and I don't have that many words after working all day to, to, to keep talking while I'm smoothing clay. So um, as I said, I'm, I'm going to be smoothing this clay. I'm finding, trying to find places that uh, there's a possibility that it, it could be weak. Um, Again, as I said, normally I would go all around. I would spend a good, a good amount of time uh, really kind of incorporating this, making it uh, go together. And it, it's just, it just strengthens it, you know. All right. So I have, I have this piece. So now I'm going to add the second piece. I have a question. Sure. If yeah. you were going to do this with air dry, mm -hmm. would you do all the same techniques, the slip and score? And I, I personally would. Air dry clay is, in my experience, I haven't done a lot of air dry clay because I started with this. And it's kind of, you know, you learn how to ride a motorcycle and then, oh, that scooter is cute. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And so air dry clay, I have done a couple little things. Um, but I would still, I would still do that. And it's just because the, any kind of clay, you, you want it to, uh, blend into each other. And so, um, when you are putting two together, you have to do extra work to make sure that, that, you know, that this isn't just the, the two places that it's, it's binding. You're also, you know, gluing that seam together. Um, this is much, much, I, I would say kind of much more important when it is kiln uh, fired because the heat is making, you know, the, the, the molecules of the clay expand and retract. You'll, you'll see that the size difference, this is the same, the same pattern for the, the blue and pink planter as you know, and it, it shrinks, but it shrinks in, in the kiln up to 13%. So whatever, you know, and again, another, another thing that I found out when I first started uh, throwing is that I would make this really wicked looking mug. And after it got out of the kiln, it was more like an espresso cup, which, you know, I'm, 
my my poor sons my i have two sons two wonderful sons and they're both uh very patient with me and and uh very loving and and i said oh for my youngest son i'll make you some beer mugs and he's like yes cool <laughs> excellent and so when they came out of the kiln they were probably as probably very similar to this but they weighed about 10 pounds each and you could see when he, like with no liquid in it, he kind of tried to lift it to his mouth. And as strong as he was, his wrist almost snapped um, just because, you know, I, I, I didn't get to that class early enough, I guess. Um, but so uh, it's, you know, things that you kind of have to, to, to remember it and work with. Um, when, when you're doing this. And, you know, I learn something new every single day. Um, and the, the hard part is remembering the stuff that you learned at the beginning. You know, like uh, if I don't, uh, December was a very busy month. And so I had to take December off kind of. I, I, um, as I, I think I mentioned, I'm a professor. And so uh, December was uh, finals and, you know, students are in uproar all the time. And, and so, uh, uh, I kind of took December off, and when I got back in January, I literally sat down at the wheel and went, all right, wa I, water, I know I need water, clay, centering, I had to, you know, a, a lot of uh, stuff, especially throwing is muscle memory, and so I, my muscles are, are as old as the rest of me, and their memory wasn't that great, so I, you know, <laughs> I had to, uh, kind of get back into it and remember and uh, you know thank goodness the the you know people in pottery studios are just incredibly gracious wonderful you know I think this happens with all artists you know just very generous kind of people who will you know uh, be in a minute they'll help you they'll explain something to you they kind of you know uh, a lot of times most people, you know, want you to succeed as much as, as you do, you know, and so um, in addition to the instructors, as I said, I go to uh, both Penguin Foot Pottery and um, the our ceramics uh, lab at school. Um, I, I learn things new every single day. I had uh, my friend, the, the ceramics professor, she saw me, you know, making one of the fairy houses in I uh, tried to do drapes, you know, to make like kind of look like fabric. And, you know, as wonderful as she is, she goes, those look pretty good, Karen. She goes, but, you know, you could dip a piece of fabric in clay and shape it. And then the cloth just burns off in the, in the kiln. And I, seriously, she rocked my world that day. She was like, what? Oh, what other magic do you know that you can tell me? All right, so I'm putting this top on, and again, I'm I'm standing up so that I can kind of center it with the with the uh, circle that is that is below. Now, this is a little teeny bit more challenging because I I'm I'm not able to you know see it, but I'm I'm uh, I could do it by feel. I'm I could see how it's it's you know you could see where the seams. A meat, you know, on the outside. So that use that as your guide type of thing. Um, uh, and so I'm just kind of getting it all together. Uh, I would also, as I did with the other one, I would make coils to go on the inside. All right, so sure, sure, real quick. Mm -hmm. Is is that clay the same kind of clay or consistency as the clay that you're putting on a pottery wheel? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And Absolutely. so what is that that particular this is stone? This is stoneware. This is called stoneware. It's called stoneware. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then versus air dry. Air, or... Right. So the the difference is air dry clay mm -hmm. has is is just again, think of it like elementary school, you know, that stuff that you did. Um, and it, you just leave it out and it dries hard, you know, when it's, when it's, uh, uh, just left out in the air, you could paint it with acrylic paint. 
um, you know, you could uh, then seal it, that type of thing, all those things. Uh, again, polymer clay, you have to bake, that type of thing. Stoneware, earthenware, and um, uh, porcelain, you must uh, uh, bake it in a kiln. And it has to be done um, to uh, high temperatures because basically you are uh, making things uh, melt, you know, and, and then reincorporate in itself. Um, so yes, yeah, so this stoneware needs to be fired. Uh, it needs to be bisqued, which is, this is the bisque state. Um, bisque state at this state, I can paint it with underglaze. I can put, remember I, I showed you the leaves, the like the little tattoo kind of uh, things on there. Um, I can uh, just dip it into one solid color glaze. Uh, you know, um, I just cannot add any more clay to this. So I could not embellish it. I could not put a handle on it. I, mm -mm, it, it it's past that point. This is just painting and glazing after this. All right. Um, this is this is not the same exact clay um, as you see here. Uh, this is actually um, uh, clay from school, but it's very similar. It, it's just it has a little bit more um, of some uh, minerals than than this kind of clay. All right. So I'm kind of to a point. I'm I have a nice shape. I'm I that's looking good. Uh, and at this point, oh, at this point is where I would, if I could find it, I would normally have my maker's mark, but of course, you know, when you need it, where is it? Kind of like mine. So I'm just gonna do what I did before is just make my maker's mark. So let me do it here so everybody can see. Just make my maker's mark. I'm just drawing in the clay and my, my name on Instagram and stuff is um, Featherleaf. So one Featherleaf designs is is my thing. And so this is my little Featherleaf. This is my uh, um, this is my uh, I guess I should do my signature, right? And everybody kind of gets to know, like especially at a studio, you get to, it's got like your nickname, you know, kind of thing. And people just have to turn your thing over. And either it's people have initials, people have zigzags, their signature, you know, this just was something super simple for me. So at this point, I'm going to start to make sure that I have um, some good edges. So I'm gonna stand it up and you can see that here, right here, I'm, I, need to, I need to work on this a little bit, right? So this is where I would, I'm just making a bend to my will pretty much. <laughs> um, although the funniest thing is when you're working with clay, that's an illusion. You, <laughs> it, it does not ever bend to your will. You just figure out ways to go, oh, okay, that's what you wanna do. All right, we'll do it your way. And so I'm just incorporating it, getting it. And I would go around all, all around every, you know, every kind of uh, seam, work it in. And so I, I want it, my rule of thumb is I kind of do it so that it looks like it was one piece that the seam was someplace else and not, you know, not where it, uh, I know it, it was. So incorporating, incorporating. And again, as I said, I would take much more time, you know, to work with this. So we have these, uh, at this point, this is kind of narrow, right? But it is still, it is still malleable enough that I can start to very gently kind of bow it out a little bit. I'm gonna bow it out. I'm pressing it kind of with my fingers and I'm just, just slowly giving it a hint of, come on, come on. You could open up a little bit. These, uh, these planters that are, I brought with me do not have drain holes in them. 
um, cause I envisioned succulents, you know, which have very shallow roots and I was just going to put gravel in the bottom, you know, and then the soil on top. Um, but this one, I thought, you know what, I might try to do it a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do, we're going to just put this on the side just to kind of be happy for a moment. Um, normally, uh, we could use this and just use it as I've done with the other ones and, and lay it on top of this. What I think I'm going to do though um, is I'm going to make it into more of a bowl kind of shape to catch the water. And then as I, um, uh, then I could put a hole in the side I could put a hole in the side and I'm not really worried about the, the design as much I, because I figure I could do more, you know. Sorry, <laughs> I have to get stuff out of my way here. All right, so I wanna make it a little bit, a little bit thinner so that I have that area that I can turn it up. Okay, and so again, just kind of manipulating it a little bit with my fingers. Now, before I um, uh, before I put it, attach it, I'm going to kind of think about where I want my hole because I'm basically going to be gluing it down. So my hole is going to have to be, I'm going to put one on either side here. All right, so uh, let me start with my, start with my little pin tool. And I always try to think when I'm making planters or anything that a plant is, water is going to come out of it, about thinking of angles of, allowing the water to flow through, right? And so I'm going to try to go to the, the floor of the inside of the planter, and then I'm going to, at a downward angle, kind of try to make that hole as the downward angle. And um, I, I tend to uh, make, try to make the holes a little bit bigger uh, than you would normally think. And, and the reason for that is um, one, shrinkage. You're going to, you know, the, the hole's going to get smaller. Um, and you want to have it be uh, large enough that if when I glaze it, I'm going, the, the glaze does not just sit there and, and pool. All right. So. So I've made my first hole. I'm going to make my, my second one here. And, you know, a, a lot of times I think about how not precise I am about things. And I think the reason is because, you know, in some cases, pottery or ceramics, I should say, can is a little bit unforgiving sometimes. In a lot of cases, it's very forgiving. You, you know, you could change shapes at any time, but you have to do some things the right way. Otherwise, it's like, nope, <laughs> denied. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So I have my two holes and I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, so now I'm going to think about putting it onto my my wee bowl here. All right, so how do I want it to look? Do I, do I care that much? Okay, so that's good. I'm going to mark it kind of just roughly because I have to slip and score it so that it stays where I want it to be. So again, I'm slipping and scoring, slipping and scoring roughing it all up. I want to do the same thing on the underside. And this is still kind of a little bit, but 
again, I, I'm the boss tonight. So <laughs> you like how I keep saying that, right? Like it's going to be true at some point. All right, so slip and score here. Water. And, you know, a lot of times, if this is like, you know, like when we were kids making mud, you know, <laughs> we made such beautiful things when we were little, we thought. All right, I'm just kind of flattening the bottom a little bit and then I'm putting it on. And again, I kind of want to make sure that my circles look, look all right. I'm wiggling it around and I can feel when it grips. And, and that means that the clay is kind of incorporating, the water is like sucking it, you know, together. And when when it is like I can't move it anymore, I know that that's you know pretty nicely stuck. So now I want to oh sure. Okay, there we go. I want to put it on my banding wheel here. Work it up a little bit. I want to kind of, one of the things that you want to make sure is that you don't have sharp edges because after you glaze, it is like a knife. It is so sharp. And so just going around, you know, rough, uh, kind of doing the edges a little bit. I have my drainage holes. I have my thing there. Um, I decided also that I was going to add some embellishments. I'm going to add a, some turkey tail mushrooms. And so with these, all I did was took a piece of clay. And again, mushrooms are wonderful things. So I'm just, I really am just kind of manipulating it. I'm just kind of moving it around. And um, thinking about placement where I'm going to put it, how it looks. And then, so with my very versatile, I'm going to make texture in it. And again, you know, it's nature. Nature is, the beauty is in the imperfection in a lot of cases, right? And so it doesn't have to be, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be, oh my God, it's perfect turkey tail kind of thing. So I'm going to come around front here. Um, hold on, my microphone is caught on my foot. There we go. Okay. I'm going to come around so that you can see a little bit better. So all right. So again, I'm going to kind of I'm gonna kind of look where where I want them. Maybe a couple. Okay. So again, as you have to do with everything, I'm going to slip and score. And again, this this pattern that I put on the uh, surface here is really forgiving because it's it has crevices in it. And so if I mark it, if I make a you know I accidentally scratch it, it's just gonna look like it was always supposed to be there. So I'm. I'm adding water and then so I'm putting it on there it's I can feel that you know it's not wiggling so much but because this is a little bit of a heavier piece compared to the wall um, I'm going to uh, Put a little coil underneath it. I'm just dipping this one in the water because I know. And again, I'm just kind of adding a little layer of strength to keep it um, uh, to keep it, you know, secured on there. I'm trying to incorporate it, it at both the the wall and the mushroom itself and with these you you'll notice that i kind of i made these before the demonstration so that they could 
firm up a wee bit um, so that they are, you know, I could, I could, with they, when they firm up, I can uh, work them a little harder. I could press it a little bit more, you know. If it's just wet clay, it will, it'll have a impression where I, you know, do that. So let's see, I might want one down here. So let's see, I think right here, I'm gonna do it. And again, same thing, this one has been, you know, these have been out a little bit, so they are of a nice consistency, a nice uh, water, you know, content that's it's not too dry. One one absolute truth is that clay is messy. <laughs> clay is so messy, and you know it's like during uh, the studio and also school they take breaks. You know uh, the the uh, studio uh, takes a break to uh, you know obviously give employees <laughs> vacation and and clean up the studio and really you know because uh, clay dust is truly deadly, you know, if you uh, inhale it constantly. Um, and so they clean all the surfaces so that, uh, you know, that that is, uh, the thread is, is lessened and stuff. And every time there's a break, I think, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll just get some play. I'll just play. I'll just, I could do it at my dining room table. <laughs> and then I think to myself, no, you can't. <laughs> Who's exactly? You know, it's like, and this, I, this is like the cleanest I've ever been. I, because I'm so, you know, we're at a library. <laughs> and so I'm, I get like, uh, um, but normally, you know, I have, my face is streaked with clay and I, you know, I'm constantly rubbing, you know, my hands and stuff. There's, there's clay dust and, and other little clay fragments all over the place, you know? Um, and so, Going back to that the question that you had earlier about um, you know doing it in your home, you can absolutely do it in your home, but it's like you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, cook in my front room either you know so you have to certain things you have to just uh, uh, think about, and I think one of the things I do enjoy about this is how tactile it is, and that I'm. I'm, you know, I'm working with my hands. I'm manipulating things that uh, make me, uh, allow me to be creative. And uh, that's one of the things that I just, you know, I, I really truly enjoy about it. And, you know, any of my fairy houses, uh, this, um, anything that I make, I, I do have to give credit to many, many different artists that I see you know, that, that tweaks something in my brain, go, oh, I could use that to make a roof or, you know, uh, just recently I had a, uh, one of my instructors at Penguin, um, she was giving a, a demonstration on hand building and just the way that she was kind of, she was kind of using almost like a pinch pot kind of technique where she was pinching things. Um, uh, just the form that she was making, I I went, oh my gosh, I can make a fairy house that would that had like a stone texture. I and I I I it's in the kiln firing as we speak. Um, I made a thatch roof that you know like like a so almost like an Irish cottage kind of idea. And it was just because she had made this one form, you know, or this this lovely artist who came up with this form that, and I so apologize, I could not find her video, I feel so bad. Um, but, you know, I, I'll get, I'll see a little bit of this and, oh, I could use that kind of mushroom with this, or I, I like that kind of roof that would go, you know, with, with something else. So, um, so I, you know, I've added some, some mushrooms here. Uh, I have a couple more um, that I could do, but I think, well, before I go any further, I'm going to make um, 
a wee, wee mushroom house just to, to fit on one of these. And so I'm just taking a, a little ball of clay and I'm going to form, form the brim or the, the top of the mushroom. Actually, I kind of even want it smaller than that. I don't want it that heavy. So make it a little. I'm sorry. Can you can you see, you guys? I <laughs> oh, you got the screen. That's true. That's <laughs> sorry. Okay. So I'm just making a the wee top of the house there, and then the bottom. All right, and so every house needs a little door. So I'm going to put a little. I know, seriously, and it's and it's and it's going to shrink exactly. You should see me sometimes, you know, because some in some places in the studio it's a little bit darker, and so I have my like my reading glasses on and I'm like very very close, and it's a little bit dark, and so I have a little. I have a little house there, I mean, a little door there, and I think I'm going to put a, a little things for windows here. I know, I sometimes I can't, it's so, it, like I can't stop. It, it just is, it's like a disease. I'm, it's it's going to be attached to one of the mushrooms. <laughs> That's what she asked. She asked, where am I going to put the mushroom, this little mushroom thing? I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> so I have my my wee little mushroom house, and I think I think I'm just gonna put him right here. So again, I have to think. I have to think about. Oh, thank you. I have to think about weight and dryness levels. And I'm going to, not only is it going to sit on top, but I'm going to try to glue it, you know, clay glue it with, uh, um, onto the side. So let's see. So if it's, if it's sitting there, I'm going to have to scratch the back here. Can you tell me, um, did you have painting in, did you know how to paint before or did you just take it up with the houses? Just took it up with, I just, I seriously, and the, the this is the funny thing. And I think Sandra and I kind of talk about it a little bit that we don't know where we got this newfound thing. And, you know, she's my sister. And so it's really hard for me to go, oh my God, she's so good. <laughs> Sorry, she's you know your sister, you know she's she's and she's my younger sister, so I could only give her so much credit. <laughs> but she is outstanding. She the stuff that she produces is incredible, you know. And so the this a year and a half ago, I would never said that I would know how to do that. I do have to admit though that painting is probably the hardest part for me. Um, because I have to kind of decide what colors and then it just starts going in my brain like oh does this blue go with the screen and you know and so that is really one of the the, the hardest parts um but then once I like click onto something it it does get it does get a little bit easier so this is the the fairy planter I would so just from what I would do is um uh paint the, the little fairy house, you know, with, with under glaze. Because of that, I would then also probably um, paint the, the mushrooms, uh, turkey tail mushrooms have that, you know, it looks like a rainbow phantom, exactly. So I would kind of paint that a little bit. Um, I would paint this probably some kind of solid color because it's got the textures in it. And so when it fires, um, as maybe you could see th with the dark brown one, um, the you know the the glaze goes into the crevices really really well, and um, so yeah. So let me just show you real quick this one. And so this 
this one, it, this basically has the same exact texture. I, I use the, the same exact, um, it does, it does. And this is, and this is done through glazes. So this is two different glazes. Um, and it, it kind of, and it's not, it doesn't crackle. That's not the good word, but when you, you know, when you, uh, when we're finished, if you want to come up and look at it, it, it really, it, uh, the second glaze, the glaze that's on top, it kind of separates away. And so it, that's why it does do this leathery kind of, you know, leopard kind of spotting on there. The second glaze was um, after you, um, sorry, second glaze was after you underglazed during the no, bisque? So, no, so, okay. and thank you. Thank you for asking that. The, um, what, what, how, what I did was I, I let it dry like this for a bit. I bisked it. Okay. And then after I bisked it, I basically just dipped it. So you, you saw from the, the video when I, the big, we have these big buckets of glazes. So I had two different colors. And so I took it and I dipped it into the, the first color, which is kind of like a, the, like a yellowy brown. Um, let that kind of just dry for a few minutes. It really dries kind of quickly, um, dries for a few minutes. And then I dipped it into a second color, a different color called cardamom. And the cardamom likes to pull apart like that. And so uh, I, I knew because we do test tiles of, of how it does it. And so this was just one right after the other. You know, I dipped it in one, let it dry for, you know, uh, maybe two, two, three minutes, and then, uh, and then uh, dipped it into the second color. After that, then that just gets, goes to the fire shelf and then it just gets, you know, put into the kiln and fire. Is that how you did the pink and blue one? Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's the same exact thing. And so the pink and blue one here, um, uh, similar, very, very similar. Uh, this is two different glazes um, on, on top of each other. And uh, again, you can really see how the fire, the temperature will make the uh, glaze kind of run or, or move, you know, different temperatures will make different colors, truly. Um, uh, purple is one of the, you know, unfortunately, purple is one of the colors that kind of burns off really easy. So you really have to, you know, do things, uh, put a lot of coats on it, you know, that kind of thing, get your correct purple for the, the correct firing. Uh, there's different kinds of firings, uh, just your basic, um, uh, depending on the type of clay you have, depending on the kind of uh, glazes that you use, uh, if either low fire or high fire, the high fires is uh, higher temperatures. Again, some glazes don't like those higher temperatures, so you want to do that you know, at the low. Some some glazes don't do their their brilliance until you do it at a, at a higher uh, thing. There's a, a, a cool process that I'm dying to try called Raku, which is a Japanese. Okay. Yeah, and and it, that is basically where you you bring it up to a very high temperature, and then you you take it out, and you could do things like. Um, uh, uh, burn things onto the surface, like put a feather or hair or, you know, other organic kind of things. And it just makes these beautiful swirling kind of designs on it, you know, and it, then, and then you put it into some combustible like sawdust or something and it, it fires, you know, it, uh, fire occurs and it, it just, you know, makes it even just more brilliant. And uh, so in the shop, do you tell them like, um, I want this fired at this temperature, and then they wait till they have a whole bunch that are going no, at that the, temperature. No, that um, at the studio at uh, both places at studio and at school, um, the they only do one uh, one temperature. Okay. So at the studio, it's all low fire, and and that's just I mean it it just makes sense. You know they have so many students and so many people. There's there's so many artists that go there. That's just like when I started just came to do a class, you know, I just want to throw some clay around that kind of thing where, and then you have artists who basically come and create to sell 
uh, you know, online and, and, and that type of thing. And so it just makes sense that everybody is at the, you know, so that they could just loan the kilns, load the kilns, you know, at, at one time. And then at school, you have even more novices. You know? <laughs> and this college student goes, oh, Yes, you know, and and so you you know you have to kind of be very careful because you know I'm a professor, but I know about college students. You know, they they're wonderful. They're so wonderful, but every once in a while they don't use their brains, uh, which is you know that's what being a college student it is. It's yeah, believe me, I I have stories I can tell you about that. So um, that's that's kind of it. Um, the you know I there's. I could probably, in, in knowing me, I would um, kind of keep going on and on. I would uh, uh, literally, because this has got my maker's mark, I would, you know, just attach it, attach it so that it's got, you know, a stronger base a little bit. Um, and you have your, I have my cup, I have my strong base, you know, good to go kind of thing. Um, but uh I would, and again, as I said, I would put more mushrooms on it. I'd start, I'd start finding butterflies I had to make. And sometimes, you know, it's like, I, I have to, I, I have to find that, okay, this is enough kind of thing, you know, point. So exactly. Now I can stop. Um, so, you know, again, I'm, I consider myself a novice. I absolutely love doing this. I never seriously never thought that I would, I would be doing, you know, um, I, I, I guess I never had enough confidence in myself that to think that I really could make this kind of stuff. Um, uh, I've I had a couple of compliments paid to me that um, when you do not work with clay correctly, a lot of times things explode in the kiln because, because you have moisture levels, you know, if you trap water or air inside, it's going to want to expand. And then, you know, that kind of thing happens. Um, when I was making, uh, uh, I was actually making a strawberry that is, you know, very similar to this. And I threw, I threw the body, the strawberry body part, I threw that on the, on the wheel. And then I decided to add, you know, other stuff. Well, when I threw it, I did not have this really nice rounded bottom that I wanted. And so in a hurry, I kind of attached stem and, and leaves and, you know, like a little, another little piece to slap it on there and just went, you know, don't tell anybody. Well, that, you know, guess what happened? Yeah, so when, when it came out of the bisque, this part that was the, the leaves, you know, that I attached had just basically, you know, separated. It was like, yep, nope, not happening. So I had, I had the leaves here, you know, and you can, there's in some cases, there's stuff called bisque fix that is kind of like glue sort of. Um, and I was, uh, I remember I was talking to one of my uh, uh, instructors who I, uh, I respect uh, uh, so much. And she looked at me and I said, we were trying to figure out if I could, if it's worth it, or if I should just trash it, that kind of thing. And uh, uh, I got to the point where I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just going to have to remake it. And I said, you know, darn, this is the first time that this is, you know, something ever blew up in, you know, in the kiln. And she, and she, paid me like one of the biggest compliments I could, you know, remember, and she goes, well, that's a testament to your skill, because if you've been making all these fairy houses all for this long, and this is the first thing that's, you know, exploded in the kiln, that means you're doing something right. And it just, that just completely made my day, you know, um, because again, you know, imposter syndrome, you know, that, that thing that, oh, I can't do that. I'm not really good at that. Or, you know, even me standing here telling you there's, I know there's so many artists who are so much better than me, but that's okay to me because I enjoy doing what I do make. And it, it, it's relaxing in some cases, it's exciting. I, 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 I have such pride when someone comes up and uh, I think I mentioned it, you know, one of the, the most common comments I get very much is, oh, I wish I could live in there. Or could you make, you know, could you make one <laughs> as big that I could live in? And, and so that kind of compliment, that, that 
you know, uh, just warms my heart kind of thing. And so again, my sister and I decided at our advanced age <laughs> to, to start a new hobby. And I think that anybody can, you know, and, and that's part of the thing that the art league, you know, the DuPage art league, it's well, everybody is welcome and you can come in. And if you don't know how to do something, they could teach you, you know, again, I, I saw Sandy's drawings when she was younger. <laughs> however now now she just recently did a cat picture where you can count the hairs it's just it's incredible and it just makes me very jealous because my stick figures don't even look like stick figures which is a little embarrassing but i can make fairy houses so thank you so much um I appreciate it. So thank you so much uh, to uh, Karen and to the Art League. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, we will be sending out the links, uh, some contact information mm -hmm. for Karen, as well as links to the DuPage Art League after tonight's program or, or tomorrow. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us tonight. Be sure to tune in next month for that special uh, virtual program on those knitting machines. Again, you'll see the images uh, that she produces, and you'll just be amazed and want to see how she actually makes them. So tune in for that one next month. Uh, and otherwise, uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Everybody stay safe and healthy, and we hope to see you again soon. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>